Hi friends. So this is our last video about intervals. We're going to be talking about augmented and diminished intervals. But let's first do a recap on what you've learned already. So you know at this point that seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can be either major or minor. And that unisons, octaves, fourths, and fifths can be perfect. And that takes care of all the numbers from 1 to 8. Great. Okay. So there's one more kind of thing we can do to these intervals we've already studied. And that is augment them or diminish them. Let me show you how this works. The first thing you want to know is that for augmented intervals, you can take any perfect or major interval and make it augmented by making it one half step larger. There's one of two ways to do that. You either lower the bottom note to make it a half step larger or raise the top note by a half step to make it larger. Let me show you how that works. Recall the major second starting on A. That's an old friend of ours by now. The whole step or major second starting on A, A to B. Now, let's say I want to make that not a major second, but an augmented second. There's one of two ways we can do this. Either lower the bottom note by a half step to make it slightly larger. So instead of A to B, we could have A flat to B natural. That would be an augmented second. It's still a second because we can count one, two, yet it's larger than a major second. So we call it an augmented second. The other way we could create an augmented second from our major second is instead of lowering the bottom note, we could raise the top note. If we do that, here's what we would get. A to B sharp. Which sounds like that. Fun fact, the augmented second is enharmonically equivalent to the minor third. The A flat to B natural augmented second would be enharmonically equivalent to G sharp to B, which we would label as a minor third. Likewise, A natural to B sharp, that augmented second, is enharmonically equivalent to the minor third of A to C natural. I show this to you because we want to be very careful about observing the number, whether it's a second or a third. Again, a second has to be a space to a line node or vice versa. And a third has to be line to line or space to space. So these qualities combined with the numbers become very powerful to tell us exactly what notes we are dealing with and how to spell them. Let's try another example. Do you remember what our perfect fourth is above A? It's D. Why? Because D is scale degree 4 in the A major scale, and we derive any perfect interval from the corresponding major scale given the lower note is tonic of that scale. So we know A to D is a perfect fourth. If we want to make this an augmented fourth, there's one of two things we can do. Again, we could lower the bottom note by a half step making it A flat to D. Or if we want to keep A natural, we could raise the top note to D sharp. Either way, we get an augmented fourth. Now I'd like to show you how the diminished intervals work. You can create any diminished interval by this time taking a minor or perfect interval and making it smaller by a half step. 
You can think of it as the opposite process for making an augmented interval. Let's take a look at some examples. Do you remember how to write a perfect fifth with A as the starting note? It will be an E, like that. Why E? Because E is scale degree 5 in the A major scale. Okay, so if we want to make a diminished interval from this perfect one, all we have to do is make it a half step smaller. And there are two different ways to do this. You can either raise the lower note to make the interval a half step smaller, or you can lower the top note to make it a half step smaller. Let's listen. This is A to E, the perfect fifth. This would be the diminished fifth with A sharp as the lower note. And this would be a diminished fifth with E flat as the lower note. Either way renders a diminished fifth. Let's take a look at this now starting with a minor interval. Can we recall how to get a minor third from A as the starting note? Let's try to remember how. Well, first, we know how to get a major third, scale degree 3 in the A major scale, which would be C sharp. But we do not want a major third, we want a minor third. So, instead of C sharp, we would have C natural, because a minor third is always a half step smaller than a major one. So that's A to C, our minor third. Now, to make it diminished, we have to make it a half step smaller than that. And you guessed it, there's one of two ways to do that. We could either raise the bottom note, making it A sharp, or we could lower the top note, making it C flat. The diminished third, A sharp to C natural, sounds like this. And the diminished third from A natural to C flat sounds like this. Those might sound a heck of a lot like whole steps to you. Why? Because they're enharmonically equivalent to major seconds. The difference is how we spell them. So that shows you a brief introduction of how you can create augmented and diminished intervals um, from major, minor, and perfect ones. Again, the recap, augmented, you start with either a major or perfect interval and make it a half step larger. And for diminished, you start with either a minor or perfect interval and make it a half step smaller. Also, fun fact, augmented intervals invert to diminished ones and diminished ones invert to augmented ones. That means that a diminished fifth, which we just spelled one, would invert to an augmented fourth and vice versa. Again, the magic number is always nine.